Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here, and today we're going to be doing our first ever sort of after action for some gameplay. So sort of a lesson to learn when we did everything. So, yesterday I got to go to OAP, Okinawan Airsoft Park, which is located actually not all that far outside of Foster from the initial uh, point they showed us. It was like way up on the back end of uh, Kinzer, but, or not Kinzer, but uh, Kadena, but no much closer to Foster side, which actually next to Area 27 might make it one of the closest fields to at least my locality. So, a few things. So I wasn't necessarily planning on going, and there was also rain initially, but the rain did clear up. Everything was okay in the long run. But as a result, I didn't charge any of my two batteries. So, first battery died instantaneously, as you'll see when I upload the first game footage, and the uh, other battery it lasted a bit better, but it was okay. So a few things that I noticed was one, uh, occasionally the rifle would go into semi and then just not fire, which was problematic for a few overwatch shots, but yeah, whatever. Also, I decided to try to use my red dot sight, which I haven't used in forever. And I don't know, maybe I'm just out of, uh, out of practice, but yeah, I whiffed a lot of shots with that red dot. It was pretty, bad. And again, I haven't played since February, so it's been about four months. A little off practice, but still. Heavy plates, helmet, everything. That all went fine, no problems. Swordens, the little cable, well, does like to dig into your head for whatever reason, so I still gotta work that out. Um, the new stock is amazing. It did help me change batteries on the fly, because I could just pop it open from back here. And that happened too. These little caps like to fall off. Might be worth taping down or something because I'm honestly never going to take the battery out of there so I can just charge it from the gun as is but yeah made battery change really easy so that was a plus stock helped two point sling amazing like initially as people have their doubts so like oh well it's difficult to shoot left handed yeah it does because you get the sling in the way and you got transitions like eh but honestly especially in airsoft where you're going to be shooting within 50 meters as opposed to a greater distance the sling is good but once you need to like really start kicking in doors and causing problems, all you really gotta do is go from here, left hand, sling overhead, and boom, you're free. You can pop, pop from here, swap out mag, left shoulder, just like that. Nice and easy transitions. So yeah, you can uh, make life a lot easier by just taking the sling off, especially when you're gonna be doing a lot of that left side shooting nonsense. But yeah, then once that's all done, sling back over, and you're all set. So. That was a fun thing, but yeah, as far as red dot sight, I don't know, it was pretty problematic, I can get a better shot, but then again, the mask was also a new factor to take into account, which is why I had the red dot sight, because getting the cheek and everything going is really difficult with that little mesh mask thing on, so it does hinder accuracy a bit, and I don't think they're exactly going to let me start taking out my laser to uh, make my shots a lot more uh, viable, so... The hand grip, by the way, these little uh, rail covers, phenomenal. Made a huge difference in the grip and feel of the gun. Not sure if it's actually see wise because I was out of practice, but eh. So yeah, there's a few things. Now as for the field itself, it's actually pretty fantastic. It's small, but they have a built up top area over the CQB play area. And so you're basically watching everything from the second floor, which is uh, new. That hasn't been done yet in Okinawa. They had a few places in Tokyo doing it, but nothing of that sort here. And the fact that it didn't buckle under the weight of several Americans with all the Japanese players. Huge plus. Um, the field, despite being small, is actually very, very well crafted. We do have uh, Tatsuya-san as well as Peter and all the others who helped to thank for that. So the field is great to play at. Really unique angles of fire. A lot of things to watch out for. There was this one kid. I, uh, I can't remember his name. Apparently he has like... 40,000, just an insane amount of money invested in this little bolt action sniper rifle. He's quick with it. And at one point, Ray actually took me out in the CQB house, which doesn't seem like it would be something that would happen because when I was coming around a corner, there was a steel support beam in the way, and I couldn't get my rifle around it as he popped around the corner because he apparently heard me. I didn't. I heard him reloading, but my gun hit that. My gun basically hit the pole, and I couldn't get a. Sh I couldn't get it re-angled to get the shot off. So, yeah. But yeah, not changing batteries. Um, I gotta figure out what's causing the uh, safety to catch every now and then, because there was, I kid you not, I peeked around, and this dude is just standing in the open. It's like, 
start start trying to get to work. He's like, what's going on now? And he looked back up. He's like, oh, snap, there's a guy. And dies behind cover. He's like, Arr! And then, of course, he started shooting at me, so. The mask, though. Despite causing a difficulty with aiming, I got shot in the mask like three or four times. Usually in quick succession, but... That could have been... It could have been teeth and a few nasty bruises, but... Oh, yeah, and also since everything's CQB, even though we are shooting well under a jewel, with only a, uh... Whatchamacallit... Frog gear shirt, which is paper thin... I'm gonna take some welts. I almost entirely got shot outside of the mask in the left hand. Never in the chest, never in the right hand, never in the legs. Just always in the right arm. I don't know. I'm, I'll go through the footage and figure out what that was all about. But, yeah... All in all, great field. A lot of cool players. Um, they have a chrono, which is absolutely just a godsend for not having BBs go like through your arm and you know police reports or anything of that nature. So that's cool. And yeah, so the field's great. Excited. I'm actually gonna go back there next week on the 11th because I'm gonna be bringing my buddy out for his first game. So cheers. That's awesome. So all that's good. The grenade belt, the 40 millimeter tactical tailor belt. Because I know Mythic was curious as to how well it works with running and having the grenades on everything. No problem whatsoever. In addition, I was kind of worried because it only has the little Velcro tabs that go over the uh, firing mechanism. With all the maneuvering and twisting and plates bumping into it and everything going on, no grenade ever went off when it wasn't supposed to. Although I also didn't have a launcher with me, so I kind of just thumb detonated a few of them. But it worked. It worked great. And... For not having a dump pouch, because with the grenade belt, it's hard to have a dump pouch with it because things are going to get in the way and cause all sorts of problems. Not all that bad, actually. I think getting the little right side mounted fanny pack would make all the difference, especially because I'm only going to be dumping a few mags in there and the rest are going to go back into the uh, pockets when there's a, whenever there's any type of lull, so. Yeah, without the play character, or not the dump pouch, it actually went pretty well. And uh, yeah, so it's a great field. I had fun. Next time I will have charged batteries. And uh, I'll see if I can figure out what's going on with that safety. But other than that, everything was fantastic. And uh, I have quite a few videos I'll be uploading here in the near future. So with that, I'm going to get ready for work. A little sore from Play Carrier, but it's a good thing. Gonna, you know, not be fat, hopefully, in the future. So yeah, that's what I got for you guys. Gun works great. For those wondering, it is a VFC... Uh, SR16 CQB sort of model that I've modified up and the uh, little flip up front side post is busted so that's why there's the uh, was it the Crytac rails on there so yeah that's what I got for you guys uh, Crytac sights hope all of you are having fun and operating successfully and having a good time with all the buddies so actually yeah one of the best parts is definitely just going up there it took a few extra hours because all these small issues that came up but honestly it's part of the experience and for me it makes it a lot more fun so I definitely enjoyed it so yeah so I'll be uploading that footage you guys can see what OAP looks like compared to uh well Sergeant 58's apparently been changing around a bit so I saw pictures it looks completely different than the initial iteration so that'll be worth I'll be definitely going to check out Sergeant 58 again area 27 down by Kinzer is still kind of doing their thing I'll have to pop in there and see what they're doing at some point. But yeah, it's all about Sundays off and going to see these places and see what upgrades and uh, changes they're making because Area 27 had a lot of unused space the last time we went. And I think the big thing, particularly I noticed with the OAP, I also mentioned this to uh, the field owner, uh, that's it, that's it, is that uh, with Sergeant 58, you've got that little brush line on the side. And so people who play there constantly know all the little in and outs and where they won't be seen and where they can shoot you from. And you'll almost always get shot from there, no matter how many times you play. And yeah, it's a little frustrating because you could be doing great and then a BB out of nowhere will come tag you and you'll be like, oh. And for uh, Area 27, they have the pallets off on the uh, left side of the field from the uh, entryway. And yeah, people will just climb into those pallets and they'll shoot through little cracks and cubbies and everything. And, yeah, so, I mean, you can't really do much to stop them. You can throw BBs over there, but they're almost always going to get out of the way and have better cover than you, so. Yeah, so the pallets are probably problematic. But for Area 20, or, uh, for OAP, the big thing I liked about it is there's no, there's no cheese mode, hide in the brush nonsense. If you're shooting, someone's going to be able to see you and shoot back, which I thought was fantastic. Maybe not always see you, 
but they'll definitely be able to shoot back and you won't be able to cheese mode your way in behind some brush or something so good stuff I'll definitely um I'm going through. I'm going to play around with some of my gear, see what I can do to improve it for next time, other than just charged batteries. And yeah, so hopefully, if you guys are coming out on the 11th, I'll see you there. So cheers, everyone. Take it easy.